Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today I'm going to compare what the difference is between dye over the ice when I dye it on a rack versus dyeing it down in the muck. I did an experiment like this with dye under the ice not too long ago, so I'll put a link to that video down below in the description for this one. The design that I'm going to use for both of these shirts is a spiral design. And I'm going to spiral the shirt the way I normally do. I've got the shirt turned inside out, and I actually have the back side facing me right now. I'm using a microwave splatter guard and a pair of locking tweezers. I'm placing the locking tweezers where I'd like for the spiral to start, the splatter guard over the top, and then I'm just going to start to spiral. The splatter guard helps to keep the tops of the folds or the peaks all about the same height. I also have the front of the shirt facing down and the back of the shirt facing me. And the reason for that is generally whenever I do a spiral, there's always one side that is messier than the other. And normally it's the side that's facing me. So in this case, I want the front of the shirt to be nice and pretty and the folds to be a little bit cleaner. So with that in mind, I started the spiral on the back side of the shirt. Once I have the shirt spiraled, I'm gonna hold the folds in place with some rubber bands. For this experiment, I'm gonna use two of the same exact kind of shirts. They're both size medium Gildan Ultra Cotton shirts. They've been pre-washed, and then I soaked both of them in the same soda ash solution and wrung them out at the same time. With tie-dye, it's a little bit difficult to keep absolutely all the variables the same, but I'm trying to keep as many as possible. It's also important to remember that every tie dyer has a different technique. So whenever I do these experiments, I'm comparing what my technique would be if I did dye over the top of the ice, both on a rack and in the muck. You may have a little bit different technique than I do, so your shirts may turn out a little bit different than mine do. Okay, so here are both of the tied shirts together, and I'm actually gonna place them aside for a couple of days because I'm in the middle of another project, and I'll come back and dye them later. It is perfectly fine to apply the dye to either a damp shirt or a dry shirt. The look is just a little bit different, but it's not gonna make a difference on this experiment because I'm doing exactly the same thing to both of them. Also with the way that I tie dye, I normally go ahead and tie a bunch of shirts all at the same time, and then I start to dye them in batches. So a lot of times my shirts go ahead and dry out before I begin applying the dye anyway. So this experiment will be a pretty good representation of the technique that I use when I tie dye. Okay, so for this technique, I am going to take one of my long metal racks, place it over the top of one of the long tubs that I have. These are tubs or containers that you would put things in and then slide them underneath your bed. I have links down below in the description for this video for most of the items that I'm using. So I've placed the rack dyed shirt over on the left hand side and I've placed the muck dyed shirt inside of a plastic container that is just about the same size as the shirt. Then I've placed that bowl or container down inside of a plastic wash pan which I purchased from the Dollar Tree dollar store. And I have it sitting on top of my rack alongside the rack dyed shirt. To make myself an ice barrier for the rack dyed shirt, I'm gonna use some silicone cake molds, which I'm going to attach together, wrap around the shirt, and then hold together with a clothes pin. So this part is totally unnecessary because you're not gonna see it. I was just kind of planning it in my head how I was going to apply the dye. So I'm using a washable marker to divide my shirt into four sections. I just kind of wanted to get the idea in my head where I was gonna place the dye. I'm going to cover up these lines though with ice, so you can just skip this part if you want to. Now I'm going to add a layer of ice onto both of the shirts, and I'm kind of trying to apply close to the same amount of ice to the shirts. Here again, it's a little bit difficult to go ahead and get every one of these variables exactly the same, but I'm trying to come close. Okay, so I've chosen four dye colors for both of the shirts, and I've chosen colors that I think are really good color splitters. I'm using Mom Jeans from Dharma, Strawberry Skies from Happy Cat Tie-Dye, Mystic Blue from Happy Cat Tie-Dye, and Elven Lily from Dharma. Both the Mom Jeans and the Elven Lily are special order colors from Dharma. They offered those not too long ago for a spring combination, 
If they're no longer available from Dharma, you can purchase them from a group called Tie-Dye Supplies Marketplace. Kathy Grieger normally sells them, and I've put a link down below in the description for this video for the Tie-Dye Supplies Marketplace Facebook page. The sellers out there purchase the special order colors that Dharma offers in really large quantities, and then they repackage them in smaller quantities. Okay, so I'm trying to apply each one of the dye colors to about a fourth of the shirt. Looking at it from this angle, I notice I didn't do such a great job, but I came close. I think I have a little bit more than a quarter of the shirt of the mom jeans, at least on the rack dyed shirt I do. I'm applying the dye at the same time so that I can get close to the same amount of dye over the eyes for both of the shirts. This is one of the areas where we all have our own different technique for applying dye. Some people use just a little sprinkle, some people use a lot of dye, and that is going to affect the way your shirt looks. So keep that in mind whenever you're comparing my shirts to maybe the way your shirts turn out is the way we apply the dye can be quite different. I have more of a tendency to be heavy handed. I know it. I own it, it's just my technique. What I tried to do is I tried to place the blues opposite of each other on the shirt and the more purple colors opposite of each other on the shirt. Now I'm gonna add an additional sprinkle of soda ash over the top of the dye on both shirts. I want to make sure that my ice doesn't rinse out all of the soda ash from the soda ash soak. I need to have that soda ash in the shirt to raise the pH so that the dye will bond properly with the shirt. Now I'm going to place this container aside and leave it alone. I'm going to allow all the ice to melt on both of the shirts. And once it does, I'm going to let the shirts process for about 48 hours before I start to rinse them. I'm starting with the muck dyed shirt, so I'm taking it to my utility sink. I'm going to dump the muck out of the container, and then I'm going to rinse the shirt in cold water to rinse out the soda ash. By the way, I just realized I've forgotten to define what muck is. Muck is just the term that is used to describe the melting ice that's mixed with the dye. So when you hear somebody say dye something down in the muck, they mean just to allow it to process down inside of that runoff. I went ahead and untied the shirt and then I warmed the water up to hot and I continued rinsing in hot water for just a few minutes to try to rinse out some of the excess dye. Okay, so here's the rack dyed shirt and you can tell it's quite a bit lighter than the other one. I'm going to rinse it the same way by rinsing in cold to rinse out the soda ash, untying and then rinsing in hot to try to rinse out the excess dye that didn't bond with the fabric. I don't like to rinse in hot for a long time, so what I do instead is I usually run some really hot water in my utility sink, add a little bit of blue Dawn dish detergent to the water, and allow the shirts to soak. In this case, since they were the same colors, I went ahead and soaked them together to conserve on water. When the water cooled off, I changed it out and I continued that soaking process until the water was almost clear. This kind of dye needs to have a raised pH for the dye to bond properly with the fabric. So I add the Blue Dawn dish detergent to the water because it's pH neutral. That way, if somehow I've missed any little bit of soda ash during my rinse process, this Blue Dawn dish detergent is going to help neutralize that in the water so that any of the dye that's soaked out of the shirt won't rebond someplace else onto the fabric. When my water is remaining almost clear, I put the shirts along with some Dharma's professional textile detergent into my washing machine and I wash them using a hot water cycle. Then after I washed and dried the shirts, I ironed them and this is what they look like. Okay, so here are both of the shirts together and I'm going to go ahead and break down each one individually. But right off the bat, they look pretty different. Let's start with the rack dyed shirt. The first thing I notice about the rack dyed shirt is there is some sort of a flaw in the fabric just to the right of the center line of the shirt. It's a flaw that I couldn't see before I started applying the dye to the shirt or when I tied the shirt. It just showed up after I dyed it. So it's some 
little blip in the fabric where it doesn't accept the dye the same way, which is really annoying because I really like the shirt. I think it's a pretty shirt. Like I said, I chose colors that were good color splitters and I'm really glad that I did because I do see a lot of cool color splits on this shirt. The darkest band of color is the Strawberry Skies, which is the kind of purplish red color that you see starting in the middle and going down toward the bottom of the shirt. The lighter pinky purple type color is the Elven Lily. So the Mom Jeans is the color which is up toward the top and the Mystic Blue is the one in between the Elven Lily and the Strawberry Skies. Okay, so now on to the Muck Dyed shirt. Overall, the shirt is pretty dark, but thankfully it's not as dark as it was when I started rinsing it. I was really concerned that I wasn't going to get a lot of definition in the shirt. You can see a good band of the Strawberry Skies in this shirt as well. But the Elven Lily kind of gets lost in this one. Elven Lily splits out blue, and I think the blue in the Elven Lily just kind of mixes in with the other two blues. And this color gets overtaken a little bit by the darker blues on either side. Okay, so let's compare the two shirts. Obviously, the muck dyed shirt is much darker and much brighter. It's kind of like if you are messing with the intensity and you just kind of turned it up a notch. The other shirt, the rack dyed shirt, looks a little bit more watercolor. It has a softer and more blurred feel to it. Both of the shirts have lines radiating from the center. On the rack dyed shirt, the lines are primarily blue, kind of like a, an aqua turquoise-ish type color. But the lines on the muck dyed shirt are quite a bit darker. So I guess it's just kind of a personal preference. I think both shirts are really pretty. I kind of like the muck dyed on this one. I like that more intense vibe. But what do you guys think? Which is your favorite? And were you surprised with how different they look? I'm a little bit surprised. I was expecting a difference, but not quite as drastic. I didn't have quite as drastic of a difference between the rack and muck dyed shirts when I did the dye under the ice. I repeated the experiment comparing dye over the ice to dye under the ice with rack dyed shirts. And I just finished rinsing out those shirts and hopefully I'll get the video posted for those soon. I was a little bit surprised with that one as well. So overall, what do you guys think about these shirts and what do you think about this experiment? Please drop me some comments down below and let me know if you were surprised, which one you liked the best. And if you've enjoyed watching the video, I sure would appreciate it if you would like it and subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you'll hit the bell, you'll receive a notification whenever I upload a new video. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you have a great day.